most people, when they read the word of God and they read about the last days, um, or they even talk about it or think about it, typically negative thoughts come to mind, fearful thoughts, uh, thoughts of destruction and despair and, and that sort of thing. And I, I want to take a moment and share with you how you can turn that into really more of a sense of, a, of, of joy. And what I'm getting at is that in the very beginning, when sin and death entered the world, back with Adam and Eve, the very beginning, God had a plan. He had a plan. And throughout all of history, that plan has just been slowly playing out. And then you get to this moment in time that we're in. I strongly believe we are in the last days. I know a lot of people have always thought that in the past, but the reality is there was something we have that they don't have. And that's the generation that saw Israel become a nation. That is that generation, according to Jesus, that will not pass away until all things are complete. So it is that prophecy being fulfilled that our generation now has, that that generation that saw that thing happen will not pass away until all things are complete. More so, we can look around and daily I see things that I'm like, wow, you can actually read about that <laughs> in the Bible. And I'm getting a little sidetracked here. But when it comes to how you look at the last days, how do you look at that? Like, how do you look at it? Well, you realize that number one, this has always been his plan. Like he, he talked about this in the very beginning and there's just been this war to try to stop it since then. And that has not stopped. And, and history has been a victim to that war, that spiritual war. But we have to really look at God in a thankful way, first and foremost, that he saw us worthy for being alive during this time, this time. To be alive back when Jesus Christ walked the earth, when he was here and, and you could go listen to him speak and you can go uh, watch him perform miracles and maybe even watch him be killed or talk to him after he resurrected. You know, those days, it would have been an honor it would, have been a, it would have been an honor to be alive in that time and be able to see that stuff happen. And it's going to be an honor in this moment in time. You know, prophets talk about paving the way of Jesus Christ. And, and God sees us worthy to do that thing. Think about that for a second. God sees us worthy to do that thing. Because, you know, there's going to be really a couple types of people on this planet in the end times, in the last days, during tribulation. There's going to be those who are on the side of the Antichrist and the world army, either warring with them against the saints or just, you know, voting for him and celebrating and enjoying the riches that come from him. There'll be those people. And then there'll be the people who are on the side of the saints, who are fighting on behalf of the saints. Uh, in the war of the saints, it's a very real war. It's, it's the second most talked about thing in Revelation, other than Jesus Christ himself, is this war of the saints. And, you know, you're, you're either on one side or the other, and but either side, it's going to look kind of scary at times. Um, there's going to be moments throughout the last days, even beyond that war, after tribulation, there's going to be uh, things that look like they're natural things, like meteors hitting the earth, the bottomless pit opening up and smoke coming out to where the whole earth is dark. Um, you know, and to the world, they're like, oh, look at these terrible scientific things happening to us uh, that are just natural stuff. Uh, but we'll see something very different. Uh, we'll see something very different. We'll see that it was written in his word that, that those things would happen. So I just kind of want to encourage you that there's a way to go about this where it's not fearful. And that way is to have understanding. It's to, to read about what's about to happen, to read his instructions. Well, what should we do? You know, you should not be in Babylon when it gets destroyed, for example. You know, there's places you should not go. There's places you should go. 
Uh, there's places you could read about that you know will be there in the last days. At the very, all the way to the very end will still be there. So when the rest of the world's on fire, at least you know some places are okay. These are things that we can do if you if you just simply kind of go, well, wait a second, God's in charge. I'm on the right side. I just have to look at his instructions and, and follow them to the best of my ability. That's why I always recommend that you go through Revelation verse by verse. Um, and I said this when I went through the book of Revelation on this channel, and, you know, put the link there. There's a playlist. You can watch every episode. But what I said in most of those, it's not just so you can know what's going to happen. It's so you can know what you should be doing. Um, that's the importance of reading Revelation. Not so I can go, oh, well, I wonder what's going to happen. You need to look at it like, I wonder what I should be actually doing. That's how you have to look at it. And people don't really look at Revelation that way. Because A, they're probably afraid, too afraid to read it and try to understand it. But B... They're just kind of, they look at it like, well, these are other people doing things. You need to read it, picture yourself doing those things. That's how you need to read it. And once you begin to read it, it empowers you. It's this knowledge of knowing that you play a bigger role in this, that you're actually going to play a role. What an honor that we get to play a role in paving the way of our coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we get that role. What an honor. But not that we can play a role, but that we can actually see what our role is. And we can then read prophecy, not just so we know what's going to happen, but so we can know what we should be doing. Uh, and, and that's how you find joy in it all. Like when you read it, you're like, well, now I know what I need to be doing. Now I know what I need to be doing to survive. Now I know what I need to be doing to be on the right side of things. Now I know what I need to be doing to help pave the way for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ because you have a role we all have a role in this thing the hard part is just really trying to understand what that is but the good news is God is not the God of confusion you just have to read his word every single thing that he had to say to all of mankind is in here somewhere uh, and it's just it's our job to try to just find it it's our job to see those deep secret things and understand what is it he is trying to show us uh, that we should be doing in the last days to be a part of his plan, not the enemy's plan.